You know something, Ultimate Warrior? Me and all my Hulkamaniacs have had it right about up to here with all your Frankenstein talk, man. We're tired of hearing you grovel for words. We're tired of watching you search for thoughts, brother. And I'm tired of hearing you talk about injecting all of my Hulkamaniacs with a poison, brother, that'll turn them into the darkness and make them run from the light. Let me tell you something, Ultimate Warrior. January 23rd, 1984, in Madison Square Garden, brother, when I won the WWF Championship, I held up a banner that said, I fear no man or beast, brother. The only thing that wasn't on the banner, it was a ghost. And that's exactly what you're gonna be, Ultimate Warrior. After WrestleMania 6, brother, when you find out where the power lies of Hulkamania in the strongest arms in the world, the 24-inch pythons. You, along with all of your warriors that are reaching down six foot below, reaching up from the darkness, you will be placed alongside of all those warriors, ultimate warrior. Past, present, and future, the Hulkster is the greatest WWF champion there ever was and there ever will be. And after WrestleMania 6, I'm going to prove that to all those warriors that still believe in you. What you gonna do when the largest arms in the world and the power of Hulkamania destroy you? Hi uh, guys, welcome to this episode of Trip Around the Multiverse with your uh, Molten Man of... Molten Man of Lust? Do my choice. Yeah. And... The man who doesn't do a job for no one, brother, Carl Charles. <laughs> oh, the worst. So, in this episode, we are um, looking at H Hogan's WWF title losses. Yes. Uh, my, my, obviously, just in case people don't know, he was also in Rocky Three and was one of the many few people... Uh, Stallone was many, one of the few people that have actually kicked out of the link drop. And uh, Hogan was playing... Thunderlips? Yes, that sounds right. Yeah, yeah, Thunderlips. Which, okay, so I always, when I knew about Hogan, I assumed he was already famous from Hulkamania. Same here, same here. Yeah, from this film. Uh, and then he got the film role, except that he was famous as Afterwards. Hulkamania before this. Yeah. And uh, he was in AWA and he was, and then lit some man, uh, what? Hired Hogan, like bought out Hogan's contract, or whatever, right? Yeah, I think. Be... Well, did he buy that company to get Hogan? One or two, something. Yeah, weird. but the, the funny thing is, is like how Vince says he created Hulkamania. Therefore, a certain generation of people just assume what we assume, right? Yeah, because we don't know any better and before it. Yeah, so exactly. That's the power of the WWF propaganda machine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, which also makes Hogan seem like. I don't want to say that, uh, like, in ring, mm. but, like, okay, did you see any Hogan matches when you were youngster? Yeah. And what yeah. did you think of his in-ring style? Not great. Even then, I was like, this is more, like, slower compared to other people. All right, okay, so, when when did you first uh, watch Hogan? Um, I can't remember. Uh... I must have been about seven or eight. I don't think like I I started watching when the, it was the WWF New Generation. So I think Hogan was already gone of WWF by that point, yeah. and I don't think I saw him in WCW until he was NWO ish. But I didn't really watch much WCW during that time period yeah, either. So he was kind of outside of my peripheral, right? Yeah. So now we sit down and watch Hogan matches, and even for the eighties, some of these matches. I just mm. not good. No. Like, you, you, no. You, you got to be fair to the time period these matches were in when you say in ring quality. But yeah, even yeah, of then, course, of course, <laughs> even course. then. Even then. Yeah. All right. Okay. First match uh, Hogan versus Andre the Giant on WWF the main event on the 5th of February 1988. Uh, this match went about nine minutes ish. Right? Felt longer. Oh, yes. It was a proper. Slow and lumbering match. Yeah. Now, I allow it for the fact that Andre was falling apart by this point. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. 
But Hogan's style cannot carry people in ring nope. at all. No. And, and by the logic of this character, where he gets beat up and then he holds up, it's just like, yeah, okay. Hmm. He's a sly one when you're watching all these matches. And you realize all he realizes he nullifies people's finishes by hulking up. Yeah. And he only makes himself look good and makes their finishes look bad. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's just uh, stupid. It's like he has to lose, but it has to be like all the all the stats against where, him. This is where we have the modern Jay John Cena effect, where he get beat to death, right? Yeah. And then you come back and win. But except with for John Hogan's C- gimmick, because he needs to hold up. But I, I want to say I accept him more than John Cena's because John nah. Cena doesn't even hold up. John Cena just suddenly come back and win. It's like what? I, Wait, no, what? I can accept John Cena's one more because when he loses or whatever, and he comes back, it's not... Like, even Hogan's ones, he's got to defeat everyone who does a run-in, so yeah, and he yeah, still sure. wins. No, John Cena never did that. Uh, Cena is better in ring quality. I'm just saying, by if you're just using a gimmick as for their comeback. Yeah, yeah I'm saying, but uh, his gimmick... Hogan, I mean, Cena's gimmick kind of worked because, you know, with the whole hustle, hustle loss of loyalty, respect, and that stuff, yeah. overcome, what, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So it kind of works. But with Hogan, because it was going for that stupid... America's great sort of stuff. I'm like, yeah. not saying nothing against America or anything. I love America. But you know what yeah. I mean? It's sort of like, America always prevails sort of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, uh, of course, you're, you're talking about kayfabe terms and in gimmick and all that stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. You know uh, what I mean? Okay. So this match, as we are saying, is not particularly any good. Nope. Um, very basic strikes. Um, yeah. All I know is that they were caught, <laughs> Hogan was kind of primarily was calling Million Dollar Man the multi-million dollar man for some reason. Right, yeah. and uh, we have so t- uh, Million Dollar Man and Virgil. Oh, he's starting to get beat up, and then you had Million Dollar Man and Virgil getting beat up by Hogan as well. And I thought, okay, that's kind of smart because you're going to get the uh, out the people that are able to take bumps and stuff. Yeah, distract from the quality of ring ring. Except yeah, they didn't yeah, do that yeah. constantly. No. They did, did bits and pieces, but it wasn't like you like I said. There was a long stretch where they didn't do it, and this match was nine minutes long. And you're like a long stretch where they didn't do it. Yes. Mm. That's how a blog it felt. <laughs> yep. It hurt my soul. And uh, Andre just blatantly choking Hogan. Six yeah. times, by the way. Holding chokes, like, on the mat six times. I'm like, yeah, all right. That's that's the quality of rope I'm looking at. <laughs> yeah. It... Um, Hogan surprisingly does the second rope flying clothesline. I'm like, okay. Yeah, I, I was like, oh, that's something I've never... Yeah. seen from Hogan before and probably never see again which is yeah. true yeah um, Hogan leg drops Andre and then referee De- Dave Hebner is uh, distracted by Virgil yeah and Andre gets H- Hogan with like a alright I wrote it down as a single arm suplex slam with a question mark on it because I don't even know what it was no because I wrote the same <laughs> thing I was like he did some sort of throw Super okay, like, did he set up for a did he set up for a bloody Sunday? But just you know, <laughs> like because I I thought he might be trying to go for like a million dollar dream Russian leg sweep sort of thing, but it just yeah. looked weird. I was like, oh, okay, because uh, you know he was headbutting him from behind, so I thought, okay, yeah. that might be it, but no, yeah. it wasn't. So uh, Hogan's arm is up at the one count, and yep. the referee counts three count because this is how Hogan protects himself from losing. But let me just point out. I've been that suplex slam in my head. I'm in case, I'm like, for their storyline, he did it deliberately shoddy, whether they did on purpose or not, right? But it's like deliberately shoddy, so everyone can see that the ref was in on the count. All yeah, right, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. This is the uh, referee to magic um, sequence where Dave Hebner's the referee. Yeah. Earl Hebner is the guy who counted it. Yeah. And then the other referee popped out of nowhere. Arguing with each other while Hogan's like being over dramatic about his title loss. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At this point, so Hogan's over dramatic about the title loss. Andre's won the title. He said, I'm going to give it to Ted DiBiase on the mic and just say, I'm going to sell it to the million dollar man. And then there was a question of whether that's legal or not. Yeah. Right? But they're celebrating, million dollar man is celebrating down the ramp. Hogan, uh, the referees, the, the two twin referees are arguing behind Hogan. Hogan looks at them and then he's, you know, playing to the crowd. Which one's the one should I punch oh, in the face? God, this is so cheesy as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, bad referee knocks over the good referee, and Hogan then grabs the, the bad referee, and he picks him up, and he tries to gorilla press slam throw, 
the referee out of the ring to Hogan, uh, to Andre and Million Dollar Man and Virgil to catch, except the referee flies over them. And they all yeah. flop down as well. So, yeah, that's quite not safe for the ref, uh, I'm not going to say. But also, how did you know that Hogan got the right referee? All he knows is that one referee hit the other referee, and we don't know which one's the heel referee. Yeah. Which... So they look the same. It was so stupid. Now, let me, let me ask you, right? I knew, obviously, the storyline going in there, because like, uh, when you read about it, it's like the plastic surgery, quote-unquote, that the referee had. Uh, that that yeah. someone had to make. So they're querying what happened inside the ring at the storyline, and then I see a promo afterwards by Hogan. Oh, that man got the plastic surgery, had a referee, um, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, wait a minute. Hogan, how do you know that the referee got plastic surgery? Yeah. No one's boasted about nothing yet. No. Really, Dr. Brian has not explained why there's two referees. No. Looking the same. And like, you know? he, even like, le- e- easy logic is just like, oh, they're twins. Yeah. Where'd you jump to? They pay for plastic surgery. we like, but yeah. they look exactly. Plastic yeah. surgery doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. Maybe in the future, yeah. but in the eight, not yet you fall. Plastic surgery did not work that way. Yeah. You know. Now, now, um, yeah, uh, I, I, yeah, that's. Well, yeah. one thing yeah, I'll say about this: he sold for Andre, so I guess. Yeah, uh, look, would you say this? Uh, look, no, okay. The quality of all these matches vary, right? No, on, none Did of I? these are must-see matches, <laughs> right? They, they all kind of look. I, I'd say this one you could miss, right? Yeah, straight up. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing much to say. No. Particularly about it. Um, no. Or, uh, uh, but. I get kind of why they had to protect Hogan, right? But because it's gimmick, obviously, like you're saying, he hooks up from whatever. So how are you going to get a title off a guy whose whole gimmick basically is he yeah. resurrects himself from the dead? But, yeah. Uh, yeah, true. So <laughs> the problem is always if he comes back from like a beating, we can't have someone beat him proper then, right? No, because that's why you need a if he gun. Beat up, you have to hook up. Yeah. That's why you need a gun in an equation. You shoot with a gun. <laughs> you know. Yeah. That's why I'm saying he's a good politician because he protected himself right from the start because his gimmick allows him to say the stuff that will protect him later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you're saying definitely miss, right? As I, as am I, right? For shizzle. Yeah. It was terrible. Okay. Awful. I hate it. Uh, world title versus Incarnate Targo. Hogan versus Warrior. W, uh, WrestleMania 6, the ultimate challenge. It's in the 1st of April, 1990. Yes. Now, this is a surprisingly long match for two guys who Do are not known for ring quality, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let, let me... Um, okay, first of all, I have to ask you to rate the match first before we go into it because there's other things I want to cover, cover oh, uh, yeah. as, as, as we talk about it. Yeah. Um, I'd say this is actually quite an entertaining match to watch. Yeah, it right? is, it is. Yeah. Not a must-see, right? No, but. No. What is interesting is, like, you and I have wrestled before, okay? Yeah. We now have to put matches together. So when yeah. you look at how the match is put together, you're like, Hogan, you are a sly bastard, right? Yeah. And if anyone wants to see how you put the match together to benefit yourself... Watch this match. Yeah, exactly. So I'd say it was musty if you want to be a cunning bastard. Yeah, right? pretty much. And we'll go through the, the particular sequences as to why. <laughs> okay, yeah. but that's why I had to say it first. So... Like, for me, I think the match itself is there, or whatever. But yeah. the build up, I remember the build up, right? Like, was yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, like, the in ring work, the in ring work is not great. Okay, no, 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 the no, crowd no. carries it though. Yeah, and and, it, and the the charisma and outlandishness of the characters. Yeah, do a lot of work. Yeah, <laughs> but it's so still trash. Hogan and Warrior. Yeah, like you're saying, the hype as well. The hype is there. The crowd's always with everything that's going on. And there's yeah. a lot of wrestles in this match. <laughs> yeah. And the crowd's still with it. And and uh, I myself was never like, oh, another wrestle. It was like, oh, there's a wrestle. But there's another one. And there's another one. Yeah. But the crowd is always staying with it. And I'm still intrigued to see how the match continues. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So as we're going to say, right? As I'm breaking down the match. Yeah. Okay. So Hogan and Warrior lock up. Yes. Hogan next Warrior get the better of their basic exchange. You know, lock up, push... Uh, and then you know, so they do the shove, right? Yeah, Warrior shoves Hogan first, so Hogan shoves Warrior back. They lock up and do the lock up push, yeah. Where one guy goes flying back, Hogan goes flying back first, and then 
he pushes Warrior harder, so Warrior stumbles back even further. Yeah. Right? So, and then they do the, you know, the Mercy, the Palm lockup. Yeah. Where Warrior, uh, Hogan goes down his knees first, and then he comes back and, and gets Warrior down on his knees. And I'm like, so you are allowing Warrior to make it look like he's slightly more powerful than you, except that you are getting the better of the, the exchanges because yep. you make himself for you slightly more. <laughs> You yeah. put more oomph into it. And I'm like, but he don't, you know, he's like, yeah, but I'm letting me go first, you know? Yeah, it's... it. Like I was saying, it doesn't make him... It doesn't look... It doesn't make Warrior look good. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of like I was saying, it's like, I'm allowing you to sort of do this because, yeah. you know... and then when it's my turn, I'll push... I'll, I'll make sure there's extra oomph on it so you look like it's hurting you more. Yeah. I get... I, I kind of, like... If Hogan was the heel, then it will make more sense yeah, what he's sort yeah. of doing. But he's not. They're both faces. Yeah. So it's like, you're not really putting Warrior in a corner where you, where he has like a big comeback sort of thing. You're just yeah. looking so, up yourself. So, to, to credit to Warrior, like, well, Hogan slams Warrior and Warrior no-sells it, right? Yeah. Um, and then Warrior's getting his, his like, a move, getting some moves in. Hogan's selling for Warrior, okay? Hmm. Um. And Warrior, uh, this Hogan injures his knee, right? Yeah. So I'm like, oh, okay, this, is this going to paint a match? Or, right, because as soon as he injured the knee, he's like, oh, maybe there's a cow now. And he's, he's, he's uh, mugging the, to the crowd, oh, you know, give me sympathy and stuff like that. And I'm like, that's, so you're trying to get the people more on your side by mm -hmm. K-Baby or knee injury. Yep. You know, now they're cheering for you to come back. And it's like, oh, you are so sly, Hogan. That's yeah. a tactic there to get, you know, to get the crowd chant for you instead of trying to get your opponent over. Yeah, which the whole point of this whole thing is meant to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> and then Hogan knows he's self me like minutes, seconds later. So it's like, yeah. what was the point of that other than for you to gain sympathy? For that you know? minor of a second sort of thing. Yeah, it's so stupid. Yeah. So, um, <sighs> Warrior is huffing and puffing, right? Yep. Because... First of all, you know that uh, Warrior sprints out to the ring, which is a stupid move, right? Because yeah. as soon as you get the ring, you've got to, uh, you, you're already tired. Especially being as big as he is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying cardio or whatever, but it's just like, you shouldn't, I, fair enough it's with his music and his, and his character, but it just is like, yeah, you can't, I mean, how are you going to, and also his Warrior's matches are really just, Quick matches anyway, so he probably doesn't matter about the cardio too much, right? Nah, yeah, exactly. He wouldn't have been like six yeah. star Tokyo Dome sort of matches, so you know, he doesn't need to. But, but um, what I know is that Holger started slapping a, a chin lock on Warrior, and he chin lock rest holds him multiple times during this match, yeah. And, uh, yeah, right, so, and okay, so I think he's holding the chin hold lock, uh, the chin hold for like four minutes in total. Hmm. Um, I could be wrong off there, but all I know is that <clears throat> when Warrior starts making his comeback and there's a double down clothesline, hmm. I'm like, wait a minute, how can Hogan be down? Warrior was in the chin lock for four minutes. How is Hogan down from a, a simple clothesline? You because know? it's the power of the Warrior. Yeah, yeah, are you telling me the amount of stamina, quote unquote, that the, the, the chin lock strain, your one Warrior clothesline, wait, well, it's a double down, by the way, so it's a double clothesline. Your one warrior clothesline, not that much stamina out of Hogan. All right. Okay. Even though we both know it's probably those rest holds for that long because they call it, they're plotting next moves. Yeah. But then it shouldn't well, take that long to plot moves. Well, I know that. I think Warrior's trying to get more stamina because. Yeah. Yeah. He 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 he's proper gas. Yeah. yeah. Um, they do Warrior chest butts Hogan. Did you see that? Yeah, I was like, what does that mean? And then Warrior. Does super light clotheslines on his comeback. Yeah. Uh, like, okay, firstly, worry you should probably have laid it down a bit, uh, lay him in a bit more because you're hitting the chest, right? You yeah. know what to hit. Even if you're unsafe, okay, well, I'm unsafe, but that's a massive chest over his hit. But yeah, it, on the Hogan. other hand, it's Hogan, right? Yeah. And he probably is like gonna be theatrical backstage if he gets injured somewhat. Right? Yeah. If someone hurts him, then he can try to bury their career. The problem is, of course, Warrior, you look bad for giving light clotheslines. Mm. And uh, what and Hogan bumping for you. You know, it, that, it didn't help Warrior whatsoever. Nope. <clears throat> Just makes it look like Warrior... 
I don't want to say it's safe because that's not the word, but it just it's more like where it doesn't know how to work. I think it's a mixture of that, and because he's against Hogan, he probably knows how Hogan can politic or whatever. That's why. He's... Oh no, no, but I'm just saying what it makes it look like is that Warrior can't work, even though, like when you're saying there's probably other things surrounding why he did the clothesline light. Yeah. Just makes it look bad because Hogan's bumping from these tap on the chest. Yeah. It's kind of like. Hogan sort of sabotaging him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so then, <laughs> Warrior does a bear hug for two and a half minutes on Hogan. I'm like, oh, jeez, man. See, but that no, part, yeah. yeah, I was like, I'm pretty sure a referee wouldn't let a move, a submission hold last that long in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Because in it, like, if you look at it like a real yeah, sort of thing, even like UFC and stuff, if you can't protect yourself like that, even in like wrestling, they will stop it. So to let a rest a bear hug go on for two minutes is kind of like yeah, endangering something. Even though you know it's fake, don't want to say the word, but yeah, even as that, it's like logically that still makes no sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and they do the arm flop thing as well after, but the referee didn't. You know, usually when you're in the hole, yeah, they will do the free arm drops and stuff. Yeah, except that the referee never did that. Like for ages. See, it makes no sense. Because you could have done it once. Yeah. He sort of like holds that whip and then goes back down and then you do it another time. Because I'm pretty sure I've seen a match where they've done that. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. So, there's a ref bump because uh, Warrior does a flying shoulder tackle and he knocks over the referee. Yeah. Um, yeah. Warrior then does two, two top rope double axe handles on Hogan. Oh. Misses a shoulder tackle. Uh, and I'm not sure exactly what happened here, as in in the sense of, so he missed the shoulder tackle, but Hogan was next to him. So did Hogan push him into the, like, his moment, uh, Warrior's momentum into the mat, and that's supposed to knock him out or something? Your guess is good as mine. Because it doesn't make he, sense. Then Hogan then pins Warrior and slaps the mat yeah. for the visual pinfall. And I'm like, you're taking me a front bump on the, on the floor, knock you out for three seconds. You know? Right? But then tit for tat because uh, Warrior, the, you know, get, starts coming back. He does a back two flex on Hogan. Yeah. And then he slaps the mat three times for the original pin on Hogan, right? Yeah. I'm like, yes, fair enough. Someone probably pitched it to you, Warrior. I'll get a false count and you get a false count, the visual pin right? Yeah. Except that obviously if Hogan got it first in the fans' minds. Hogan's won. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like, this is so sly. This, this whole thing is so sly. Yeah. Um, Warrior does his gorilla press uh, slam and splash combo. Yeah, Hogan holds up to of nullify course. Warrior's finisher, right? As, yeah. as you do, punch, yep. punch, big boot. He misses the leg drop and it, he sells his ass hitting the ground for the theatrics because Warrior's then going to run to rope and do the, the, the Warrior splash. Yeah, so like, all right, fair enough. Because you know, yeah, um, and then one, two, three, and as soon as the three count hits, Hogan. Kicks out, then he realizes he lost the match. He points at God and stuff like, oh, you know, just being overly hammy. Mm. Just like, did the power of God fail me or whatever, right? I'm not sure what, what, exactly what he's going for, other than the sympathy. And um, not sure if you know this, but he wasn't meant to give the warrior the belt. Yeah. Um, I knew this. And then he done it, so obviously, so he can, he can keep himself looking. Great. Yeah, yeah. Holding Warrior's hand up like he's a great, you know, he's a good sport and stuff like that, and then get the sympathy while he's going back to the locker room, like <sighs> Hogan. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Intriguing match to watch. Actually, it's quite an entertaining match. Strange enough. Um, yeah, and if you want to look how to put over your opponent but bury them at the same time, do this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. By the way, um, yeah. I found. A version of this which had Scott Hall doing commentary over it. Yeah. I'm not sure if you've seen it before. Um, no. He, he, he's talking to Bishop and someone else on it uh, in this ma- uh, during this match. And he, yeah. he's, he's taking, he's, he's, he's take, making fun of it, but at the same time, he's like, go Hogan. Yeah. You know, Scott Hall. He's, yeah. He's, make, he, he's having a good time making fun of the match. And I'm like, oh, that's actually quite funny. Uh, Scott, Scott Hall, you're, you're a joker. You're a joker. Um, maybe if you find it sometime, just give no, it a watch. It a watch. It's quite it's quite funny. 
Eric Bischoff apparently didn't know the ending of this match. Wait, what? Eric Bischoff did not know how this match ended. <laughs> yeah, it's what? strange, isn't it? In general, we didn't know. Yeah, because he was like, what? That, is that how the match ended? <laughs> he, he, Scott was like, oh yeah, Warrior's going to do this and get the pin for because this was coming to the end of the match. And then, and yeah, Eric Bischoff was surprised because he didn't realise. When was... Because obviously this must have yeah, been... Yeah, I know. I I I can't okay. I don't know how recent the commentary was, right? But I'm I'm guessing it was you know uh, in the past within the past ten years probably. Yeah, I that's know. mad. Sorry, I thought he would at least know. Like that's the reason why Hogan brought him Warrior into WCW so he can get the win back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is weird and petty, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But then brothers are gonna brother, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so. Um, now you're just trying to make me... Okay, hold on. I'm, I'm trying to find out exactly when... Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. It was, it was one of the last call, calls with Scott Hall on his YouTube. But I think and I think this was 2000, but I might be wrong. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. That's uh, weird. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know. I, don't, I, didn't, I mean, obviously, I didn't check into it because I didn't know we were going to speak about it, right? Yeah. I just find that weird that he didn't know the finish. I thought it was like a well-known thing. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's yeah, just... yeah. Exactly. And like you said, deliberately got Warrior in WCW so he could get his win back. Yeah. But... And like, it's not... Eric Bischoff's didn't been in the wrestling business. So I, you, you would think he would... Oh, okay. It's... So, the more I think uh... about it, the more confused I get. So I'm going to stop thinking yeah. about it. Oh, gosh. So... Huh. Here's, um, here's, the, here's the thing with this match in particular as well. Yeah. Warrior was supposed to be the next big star yeah. in WWF. Okay. So of course you use Hogan to get him over, right? Yeah. So then Warrior can carry the torch. Except that you, like, as we're going through the match, he's sabotaging Warrior every every in every direction. Because if I remember correctly, wasn't Warrior meant to take over for Hogan? Because Hogan was meant to be not retiring but taking some time off, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then he decided afterwards he's not because he's a dick. But yeah, Ooh. who who knows exactly, right? Oh no, Hogan knows exactly what he's doing. That's the that's the that's the thing. Problem. Yeah. Um. All right. Next match: Hogan versus Undertaker, Survivor Series '91. The gravest <laughs> challenge now. Uh, the thir- it's a thirteen-minute match that went. Uh, sorry, match went thirteen minutes and it was on the twenty-seventh of the eleventh. That's November, 27th of November, 1991, right? Yeah. This is terrible. Yeah. Now, this is this is, um, this is Zombie Taker, right? But you can still have good matches with Zombie Taker. Yeah. The problem is Hogan's not... And I would also say as well, um, Undertaker probably didn't have the greatest in-ring skills at this point because he didn't need to do much. Yeah. But you can still work around it if you're a good uh, wrestler, right? Yeah. Which Hogan is not. Because <laughs> all I'm seeing, right, <sighs> is eye rakes during this match. Yep. So many damn eye rakes. It was a terrible match. Like, yeah. Undertaker stuff was cool. Yeah. Plus, because he was new at this, like, a new sort of yeah. thing. I was like, yeah, he's, that's pretty cool what he's doing, whatever, you know. But the Hogan part of it was just like, mm. There was one bit where Taker tried to slam Hogan's head into the ring steps, except that Hogan's head doesn't even hit the ring steps. <laughs> nope. Uh, Hulk, Hulk, a taker has Hulk in an iron claw for 2.5, two and a half minutes. And I'm like, yeah, this again, this sort of rest hold stuff again. Yeah. Uh, but here they break it up. I mean, like, so when he's got Hogan on the ground, Hogan's shoulders on the ground, so the referee starts counting and, ro- and Hulk rolls his arms up. So I'm like, okay, fair enough. They're breaking. They're using the rest hold, but they're kind of using theatrics within it because he does the um, they do the free arm lifting as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So just to make it obvious, that it's not only a rest hold, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, Hogan no sales a tombstone. Like, yeah, okay, Hogan. Yeah, this angered me, but yeah. Yeah, Hogan hulks up and punches take about ten times. Yeah. I'm like, what? Usually you just do like... Three? Yeah, yeah, and the big three, yeah. but yeah. So, Hulk's up, hits him ten times, slams him. Ric Flair comes out for some strange reason. 
right? Yeah, I had to sort of... I remember someone telling me about this because if you remember, someone said that Hope Kogan is not the real champion. Yeah. Yeah, because this is when Ric Flair came over with the WCW champion calling himself yeah. the real world champion. Yeah. That's why no, Ric no, Flair but... comes out to prove... Yeah, I mean, yeah, so I, I think randomly comes out because he's just like, he didn't need, all the time Ric Flair's been saying that he's the Royal World's champion and you're calling out the current champion, but you don't need to walk in the current champion's match no. and do stuff, you know? Uh, you could attack him after the match, fine. You can't run on him before the match, but when you come out during the match, you know shenanigans are up. Yeah, but again, the... Hogan matches, we're going to notice through all these matches, he, this yeah. happens that he has to be like shot for him to do, for him to lose, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So Take Hogan gets on. distracted by Paul Bearer. Yep. Randomly then decides to attack Ric Flair <laughs> as well. It's like, okay. Uh, gives a big boot to Undertaker and he's about to do a leg drop. Paul Bearer grabs Hulk's leg. Undertaker gets Hogan up for Tombstone. Blair slides the chair underneath uh, Hogan's head. Tombstone hits, even though it blatantly does not, you know, nowhere yeah. near the chair. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tiger gets the free count. Hogan's selling on the, the ground like he's uh, got neck issues. Yeah. Like he really injured himself. Yeah. As and whatnot, right? Um, yeah. Now, not a great match at the nope. war. Very random, but you go. You explain to the people. I mean, about the uh, the tombstone at the end. So basically, both these tombstones were kind of botchy because, yeah. like, under Hogan's hands weren't in the right place. It's like one was sort of wrapped around Hogan's, I mean, around Taker's waist. The other arm was sort of stuck in Taker's arm. Yeah, and I was like, I I'm pretty sure this isn't Taker's fault. This is yours. But anyway. Yeah. And yeah. so the tombstone basically, his head was nowhere near Undertaker's knees. Yeah. So I don't know how he can claim that Undertaker tombstoned him really, really, realistically, like actually tombstoned him on a chair because he's, my head from here is more closer to that chair yeah. than his is. So... Um, when you got, when they got backstage, he kind of like said to Vince and everyone that Undertaker dropped them in his head. Yeah, and uh, his call, famous brother, words, call yeah. my wife, call my child, tell her, tell him that I'm hurt, and see me in the hospital. Yeah, and his famous words were, "You got me, brother." Yeah, and like, oh, okay. <sighs> this, oh. The rest of the story goes like basically, Undertaker's looking at Hogan, feeling super guilty. Yeah. And Shane McMahon says, "Will you wait? Will you, will you feel guilty for?" Him? He goes, "I dropped him on his head. I injured him." No, no. Shane's like too untaken. No, that guy's a bastard. Right? Watch the replay. You were nowhere near his, yeah. like, the ground. His head was nowhere near the ground. No. And then, like, yeah, Hogan. I mean, Undertaker eventually watched the replay, saw it, and then he he he. he uh, I think the next tapings, he came to Hogan and he said. Your head was nowhere near the ground. Why you? Why were you? Why were you? Why is your neck hurting? Yeah. And then Hogan says, "Oh no, no, no! It wasn't injured because it, my neck wasn't injured because uh, my head might have touched the ground. I think like you're holding me too tight, right? But he told he, Undertaker holds him tight to keep him safe, so he didn't hit the ground, right? Yeah. But Hogan says, "Oh, you hold me too tight, and I couldn't move my neck around, and that's why I got injured." That's why I felt something. I was like, wait, wait, what? what? This makes no sense. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's an ass. But, um, yeah, so... Because that kind of um, ruined Undertaker's push for a bit, didn't it? Yeah, well... Yeah. Because he lost the title, like, next week, didn't he? Yeah, well... Um... Well, we're going to go into that, because that relates to this. The next match. Does uh, it? The next time Hogan loses the title, yeah. <laughs> And this is the next time. So yes, yeah, so like you say, Undertaker held the title oh, yeah, for yeah, yeah. six days, right? Yeah. And okay, so the next title, Hogan title loss, relates to the match, but which uh, the rematch for with Undertaker for the title, yeah. right? At uh, was it Tornado Tuesday or something like that? 
the event. Taco Tuesday. No, Tuesday in Texas. That's it. Same thing. Yeah. So the finish there was a bit of a cluster because you had all sorts of uh, shenanigans. Yeah. yeah. Shenanigans. And, um, yeah. So then on the 4th of December, 1991, Hogan gets stripped of the title. Yeah. Oh okay, yeah, so you won, won the match under, against Undertaker, yeah. Yeah. Um, Ric Flair involved again. Um, I believe he threw the stuff from the urn, put the Paul Bearer's down into Undertaker's face, and then did a roll-up pin, a schoolboy, yeah. and he won. Right. Now, <clears throat> I'm like, right, whatever. <clears throat> Hogan won the match, yeah, fine. But to strip him of the title. Didn't make sense. Nope. But I, but when you look further down the line, you can see why they did it. Because Ric Flair was going to win the title. Yeah. But then Hulk, Hulk didn't want to lose to Ric Flair. Yeah. So then they had, okay, the title's on the line for the Royal Rumble in 992. And the winner of the Royal Rumble wins the title. Okay. But I'm thinking in my head, all right, that, yeah, so the title's held up, kind of. And, they, and Jack Tunney is saying, to be fair, Hogan and Taker, because you both claim to be champions, uh, and 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 it makes sense. You guys can pick your numbers from number twenty to thirty, right? You don't need to work the whole rumble, okay? Yeah. I'm like, all right, that's that's kind of that's fair enough then. But the issue is this, right? <clears throat> so you had Ric Flair come in, the real world's champion, okay? And yeah. you had Hogan there and Undertaker. Who both have claimed to the tar. Yeah. So realistically, you could have done a three-way. Yeah, because you could have said Ric Flair, when he came into the company, he signed a contract to have to unify his title with the whoever's the champion, right? Yeah. And if the champion is held up between two people, then logically you're just going to free you about, then everyone there can get protected if they lost, right? But then back then they didn't really do um free matches, did they? That's true, it's true. It's true. I, just, I just thought about it now. They didn't, I don't remember ever seeing any really back yeah. then. Hmm. It's true. I was just trying to think of a way that the, they could work in everything to make it more make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Other than Hulk not wanted to lose because he didn't want to lose. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, yeah. Tiles on the line of Rumble. Yeah. Uh, Hogan gets eliminated by Sid. who then eliminates... Okay, Sid get, eliminates Hogan, right? Hogan yeah. looks up to the crowd like Sid and eliminate me unfairly, which he did not. No, did it fair and square, fair and square. Yeah. Sid points out Hogan. Hogan grabs Sid's arm, right, <laughs> trying to pull him out. Yeah. And Ric Flair then tips uh, Sid over. I'm like, yeah, but so Hogan, you get stripped of the towel just so you didn't didn't want to lose to Ric Flair. Except that you could have done this whole scenario while you were still a champion, mm-hmm. and he still would have been fine. Yep. Because it doesn't, you, 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 like, if you didn't want Ric Flair to ch- it's a Royal Rumble, so you're protected from taking a pinfall anyways, right? Yep. And then you have, like, 29 other men, so you always got the excuse of 20 other people. Champions at a disadvantage because so many opponents, but he's got a target on his back, all sorts of, of protection, you know? But whatever. Yeah, um, that's the thing in it, but whatever. Yeah, I'll only, I wouldn't even rate the angle, by the way, as well. No, the only good thing out of the whole thing was Ric Flair becoming champion. If I'm honest, but yeah. <laughs> because his promo was is, is amazing, yeah, with a tear in my eye and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, you know what I thought you said. The only what? thing that could, came out of it was that Hogan wasn't champion, and that's why I laughed. That too, no, no, Ric Flair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. hate Hogan as champ. Okay. Yeah. So next, Hogan title loss against Yokozuna, King of the Ring, 1993. This yeah. is a 13 minute match, right? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> this was on the 13th of June 1993. 93. Um, yep. Okay, so Bobby Heenan, the brain, he's hilarious. Yeah. Um, says that Yokozuna wrestled a 30 minute match with Bret Hart at WrestleMania 9. Yeah. And then Hogan decided to come in after he was after that title match and beat Yokozuna for the title in 20 seconds. I'm like, he did not wrestle 30 minutes. Maybe he wrestled 10, but that's out of push. Yeah, that's being kind, you know. Yeah. Um, so Hogan's much leaner and smaller because of the upcoming uh, yep. steroid scandal. Yeah. I like but how they keep 
yeah, no, I, I don't say I like it. It just how they kept the saying it. You know, he he's become leaner and faster, so he can out speed Yokozuna. Blah blah. I was like, yeah, yeah. he could have done that before anyway. But all right, yeah. sure. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say that as well. Like K Fave, they K Faved it well. Yeah. I was like, oh. even though Savage did not, <laughs> I like Savage in commentary because he was no, he never said anything good about Hogan. Because <laughs> then was like, wait, yeah. you could tell he they're having beef in real life at this point because he yeah. just doesn't say anything good about him. Yeah. Like, like um, all the com- other commentators like, yeah, you know, Hogan's uh, the greatest man to ever lived. Blah, 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 blah. Savage doesn't say anything about that. I'm like, wow. You go, Savage. You go. Uh, okay. Now, for some reason, right? Hogan is actually really animated in his selling for Yokozuna. Yeah. Uh, and there's a US chant, USA chant for Hogan. <laughs> yeah. While he's in a bear hug. A two-minute bear hug. Yep. Right? Again. Mm-hmm. But this ends with a belly-to-belly suplex from uh, from Yokozuna. I'm like, ooh. Yeah, man. His belly-to-belly suplex is awesome. But yeah. Except then Hulk just nullifies it by hulking up. and like, oh, Yeah. Cool. And he does punch, punch, big boot. But he does it like three times? Yeah. To Yokozuna? I'm like, right. So are you trying to help Yoko get over because he managed to... Like, withstand everyone gets loose milked over by the first big boot. But yeah. he managed to withstand three of them. Yeah, I also kind of find that weird. So Yoko kicks out of a Hulk and leg drop. I'm like, oh, right. But I don't think... Personally, I don't think Hogan would have allowed that in the sense that he he thought that because there was a the camera like you know I think uh, Mr. Fuji was meant to uh, distract the referee mm. it was slightly too late so yeah, so yeah. you're gonna kick out maybe I don't know specifically but it's just like Hogan why are you being unselfish to Yokozuna but then again I could probably after we finish speaking about the match I could probably we could probably come up with reasons right um, Hogan signals for a slam cameraman walks on the ring yeah yeah this is and so he, stupid yeah yeah he fire flat he he, he he presses the button on this camera and it's like a fire flash to hogan's face yeah hogan uh he gets a yokozuna leg drop and yokozuna wins hogan sells blindness to hold the spotlight of course right yeah hogan, yoko gives them a bonsai drop and then hogan sells out for sympathy by being help, uh, when he gets uh being helped to the back and i'm like yeah okay fine right <laughs> Hogan, I you know funny enough I was entertained by this match. I don't know why. I don't yeah, know why. same. Bobby Heenan, Bob, Bob, you know Bobby Heenan. Bobby Heenan and Savage probably. Yeah. Helped. And recently I've strangely become a fan of Yoko Zuna. I don't know what it is. <laughs> right. So to be fair, uh, like he's very heavy and massive at this point. So yeah. he's not his heaviest, but he's, he's yeah massive. Yeah. Uh, so I can see why like you have to do more of the work when Yoko Zuna matches. Yeah. But I don't know why Hogan was selling for him and making him look good. Yeah. Maybe because he knew he was on his way out. Because I'm, well, I'm pretty I think sure. My other theory is he knew that, like you said, he's on his way out and he's like, Yokozuna, he ain't going to be a main or tier star like uh, like Ultimate Warrior. Yeah. Right? I can make this guy look good and I can come back later on to defeat him or whatever. But yeah, he's yeah, never yeah. going to carry the company like I did. You know? Yeah. Like, of I could put over a guy who's only going to be there for like a, the, under the spotlight for a tiny bit. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I'm like, right. I mean, in my, my head, in my own head, that's the only reason I could think why Hogan allowed Yokozuna to get the better of him for a bit, and then he obviously had to get himself protected for the finish. But that's that's Hogan. Hogan. Yeah. Hogan. Hogan gonna Hogan uh, dog. Yeah. So weirdly enough, we're both saying this match is quite entertaining. Yeah. Don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I've entertained him because I remember, like, yeah, this is the last time he's in the WWF. So, except that it isn't, right? <laughs> yeah, well, for like ten years, yeah. Yeah. So, and Hogan also, was... I remember so... watching this when I was a kid, and I was in Yoko's side, Yoko's side because I was very pissed off about how he screwed over Brett. At yeah, yeah, yeah. WrestleMania. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we'll never speak about that. Uh, yeah. So, you know what? Hogan won the title from WrestleMania 9, right? And he yeah. didn't wrestle until... June. Like, and that was at, what, uh, uh, March, April? Yep. And he didn't wrestle a t- an entire match until this match? Yep. Uh, all right, well, okay. 
so Holga versus Undertaker, Judgment Day, 2002, on the 19th of May, 2002, of course. Yes. Uh, this match went 11 minutes. And like, all right, so pr- before the bell, Undertaker beats Hogan with a weightlifting belt, uh, right? Yeah. But somehow, Hogan revives without hulking up, right? Yeah. And he beats Taker back with the belt. And I'm like, wait a minute. You know what happened? He used what? Phoenix Down from Final Fantasy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's well, how that's the thing, right? Because it was like, if Hogan hulked up, he would have used his Hulk up for the match, uh, and then that's it. Yeah. He could hulk up later on, except Hogan being Hogan. I mean, like, look, let's put it this way, right? When yeah. he came back and he had the match with The Rock at yeah. uh, WrestleMania 18, he hulked up like two, three times, right? And then, like, really? He only hulked up once, usually? Mm hmm. Whatever. Oh no. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so so Earl Hebner disarms Hogan and throws the belt out of the ring and that's when uh the match officially starts. Yeah. Um Taker works on Hogan's braced up left knee. Ends up giving Hogan a really terrible choke slam. So Hogan Jesus, doesn't even yeah. jump properly. Yeah. And you can tell that kind of pissed Undertaker off. But uh, it's, it's even worse because he holds up right out of this. Yeah, and you're like, of course you did because I mean, you, I, I basically just you kind of slipped and I got into the ground. Was a choke yeah. slam. He basically did. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, oh, the so big stupid. boot and leg drop on Taker. He kicks out. Vince comes out. Taker gets a chair. Hogan big boots the chair to Undertaker's face. Right. Yep. Gives a leg drop. Vince distracts the referee. Um. Punches and leg drop to Vince. Taker gives... Uh, so, and then the referee's trying to what, uh, get Vince out of the ring. And Hogan's also trying to... Because he's facing the opposite direction. He's like, yeah, yeah, help Vince out of the ring or something. Takes a chair shot from Taker. And then he gets choke slam. One, two, three. Now, the commentary said that Hogan took the chair shot to the back of the head, right? Yeah. But we, when we're watching it, it was obviously the upper shoulders because nowhere near his head. Yep. But my logic is he hit him in back deliberately because he's going to choke slam him next. Yeah. They should have made, you know, that should have been the call. Yeah. Hit him in the back, weaken his back, put a choke slam, done. Yep. But no. This is, this is a horrible match. This is a horrible match. Yeah. Well, like I said, once again, he has to lose from outside, outside information, information, yeah. outside inf- <laughs> interference and a weapon. Yeah. Yeah. To be fair, he's old at this point as well. He's like coming up fifty, so But even that, like, he should it's the Undertaker who's at his not his prime, but like at prime evil Undertaker at this point. You but you yeah. don't need to sort of protect Hogan, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cause like when he goes against Brock Yeah in a match, Brock just murders him. Yeah. And there's no, like, outside... In- I don't remember if there's any outside in the film, but I just remember him murdering Brock and Brock's bleeding and everything. And I thought that was amazing. Same with uh, when Hogan was having his match against The Rock. Yeah. <clears throat> but, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be what it's going to be. Gonna be, what's gonna be. Uh, not to say... I mean, like, okay, some people... Get- you can c- carry Hogan at this point to a match, depending on who you are, right? Yeah. But... He's got you're gonna to have to do a lot of the work. Like if you're Shawn Michaels, for example, you've got to be super theatrical. Yeah. That was later on. That was years from this as well. Yep. Literally like but you've got to have that level of quality to be able to carry Hogan. And look, man had the leg injury as well. So it's like I know where you had to get a title off him, but at the same time, wouldn't it be better to put a multi man match? Because that way you cover up his deficiencies. Yeah, but you could have, Triple H lost the title to Hogan the month before. Yeah, and then which is still when you think about it now the most insane thing ever. But yeah, 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 because Triple H couldn't uh, couldn't outpolitic the other Triple H, Hollywood Hulk Hogan, right? Yeah. Um, but if 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 Triple H was in this match, because he could say I want my title rematch, then Hogan's like. He's got this beef with the Undertaker, and he basically challenges Undertaker to a title shot, or whatever they, you know, they have. To, they could basically work, make it so there's other people in the match to carry the load. Yeah, but um, yeah, this this uh, missed this missed this match. It wasn't really that. But I think, 
no, I, no, if you did the Morty Man, I don't think it would have worked for the story because if he's got proper beef with Undertaker or whatever... It's true, it's true. Yeah, it wouldn't make but no that's, sense. But that's when, that's when you start writing the story differently to get to this uh, different conclusion. Yeah, but if the end goal was fun to get the title, but out of Triple H into it and that stuff kind of doesn't make any yeah. sense. Yeah, no, no, but well, that's why That's why if you lose this match, you're going to have this the title change. You start your story differently from the point where Hogan won the title to get later, you know, to get to where you need to get. Yeah, yeah, I suppose, but... Yeah. I don't know yeah. why they thought that Undertaker could carry Hogan to a match. Um... Yeah, not to yeah. say Undertaker can't carry people because he can, but <laughs> it's all Hogan. He's like at this point, he, he yeah, he. Yeah, I get you, man. Yeah. All right, final match, final match with Hogan. Um, WWF tag team uh, title. Yep. Edge and Hogan somehow. You yeah. know, it's amazing. Edge and Hogan versus the un-American Christian and Lance Storm. And this Thanks. is literally like a month later. Yeah, Vengeance 2002 on the 21st of July 2002. Yeah. 10 minute match. Okay. Now, they do a lock up, right? And Chris, with, Hogan locks up with Christian, and Christian super sells. Yeah. Him. You know, rolling back, flopping all over the place. I'm like, Christian, you're a joker. Because he, he flopped out of the ring. Yeah, I was like, okay. Like, I, could, I get why he's super selling for Hogan and stuff. Him and, because, like, he was one of Hogan's like one of him edges like heroes of the kids. So you yeah. can see that they were super happy to be in the ring with Hogan. So I can understand the overselling and making Hogan look great because like, hey, I'm yeah, yeah, fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. He didn't do it on purpose to sabotage him. He tried to no. make him look good. Is what, yeah. 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 Um, so, also, the heels just run into Hogan's punches. Yeah. Like, <laughs> okay. All right. Whatever. You're, you're rooting on the spot. They come to you. Yeah, and to get punched. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, it's Hogan, in a minute. Yeah, um, I did find it funny how Christian gave Hogan a reverse DDT, and Hogan yeah. holds up and does the whole Hogan finger point, right? Yeah. And Christian throws the stumbling fit. I'm like, this guy's a joker. Christian's the best. That's why he's yeah. a professional. Yeah. Yeah, he gets the punch in the big boot, and a leg drop, which Lance Storm breaks up. Yeah. The heels then isolate Hogan. Yeah. Um. And then, obviously, Edge gets out tag. Yep. Lance Storm leapfrogs over Edge. Who Edge is going for a spear. Lance Storm leapfrogs over it. Edge hits the referee. I'm like, yep. oh, nice, nice. When I saw it, I was like, now I remember how this ends. Yeah. <laughs> Shenanigans. Yeah. Yep. Execution on Lance Storm for a visual pinfall. Yeah. Test attacks Hogan, throw him into the ring post. Big boots, uh, Edge. No, hold on. Yeah. 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 Uh, Big Edge. Edge comes back somehow and spears Lance Storm. Yeah. I'm like, well, so you're telling me the heels interference still doesn't allow them to win? Because he's on Hogan's team. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Hogan hits Edge with a belt shot while the referee's distracted by Christian. And then uh, Lance gets the pin one, two, three. Wait, what? Wait, what? What'd you say? Yeah. Now Jericho hit him. No, sorry, no. Jericho hits Edge with the Yeah, because you said Hogan hit Edge with the thing. I was like, wait, wait, what? No, no, Jericho, sorry, Jericho. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, now here's the thing with this match, right? Yeah. When the people that weren't Hogan in this match were in... It was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was great. It was good, right? It was like a... I would say a B-plus match when they were yeah, in the yeah. ring. Yeah. And then Hogan gets in the ring and everyone's basically got to work, work around him. Yep. They got to slow right. down well, for him. They got to slow down for Grandpa. Yeah. Um. I would say. Would you say watch the ball or miss? Okay, hold on. Well, it's an odd. It's an odd one, right? Yeah, it's a super odd one. Because it's probably missable overall, but it's good when Hogan's not in the ring. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, I enjoy three people at this four-man matches yeah. work, and you can obviously tell who those three people are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And every time they were in the ring, I was like, yeah, this is great. You know, yeah. Ed and Christian are personally two of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Yeah. Lance. And, uh, Lance Storm is underrated, right? Yeah. But really good. He's really good. I can't remember a 
match of his I don't like. But Hogan, I have a hundred of matches of his. I, don't I, 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 I tell you what, as well, it's also funny when you look at it like that. The, the generational difference because he's got a cartoonish gimmick. Yeah. And then, them guys are more attitude. I want to say attitude era, but more like realistic gimmicks. Where yeah. the, the world has evolved in entertainment since that point, and he sticks out. Yeah. Especially with what he food. wears and stuff as well. It's like, yeah, you just stick out, dude. Like, and. Your tan and doesn't Kedrock help. Has a, sorry, go on. You, you go first. I was saying, like, his, his tan doesn't help because people don't get that tanned anymore. Yeah. And like you're saying, yeah, what you're about to say, like, his finisher s- stands out because it's something so basic. Yeah. Now, I always wondered why Hogan's finisher was the running leg drop. Yeah. All through that period of time. I'm like, people evolved their finishes, mm-hmm. right? Uh, Jericho's got multiple finishes. And I wouldn't say the... Uh, Judas Effect is the greatest finisher, but whatever, yeah? Yeah. At least he knows that he's got to readjust things. Yeah. Hogan does it. Yes, leg drop, leg drop, right? But at a certain point where people are just starting to do running leg drops. Yeah. As a unless you're Yokozuna or Nia yeah. Jax, right? Yeah. You shouldn't... You, you, your running leg drop shouldn't... You, you could have... By the time he moved to WCW, yeah. he should have changed his finish. Mm-hmm. I have people kicking out the leg drop and then he does something else. Yeah. Finished. Um, yeah. It's even if he just changed the transition into the leg, like the move before the leg drop would have yeah. made a difference. But like, you know, when a point, right. Fair enough. Cena used that as adjustment all the time, but he also had the STFU in it. So whatever. Yeah. Um, but at least he sometimes changed up his, way to get into FU like when he had the springboard stunner even though that was a terrible yeah. move but he uh, you know something. Uh, for Cena I would have preferred people sucking out the the the, the uh, attitude adjustment because it does not it's certainly a Death Valley driver except that he, it, 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 it look, it's a terrible looking version because it's too safe he just flips them onto their back yeah I like I it I would have preferred yeah. people start kicking out that and he start using a new finish with the springboard stunner that would have been yeah. more sense yeah 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 but like at least he changed up like his arsenal and stuff. Yeah. Hogan never really did. Oh. Like all these matches we watch, the only yeah. move I legit remember him ever doing was like a back body drop. I can't remember anything else he's done. <laughs> Except for his finishing, you know wait, what I mean? Wait, wait. So all we know what he does is punches. Yep. Big boot, leg yep. drop, yep. eye rakes. Yep. Um Yeah. Yeah, saying I don't remember anything else legit. Oh, clotheslines maybe. All right, in clotheslines, yeah. But the most, but we're talking about the most basic of strikes and maneuvers, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, look, give the props to him. That's the power of charisma somehow. Yeah. That he's able to like. It was. It's what helped the Rock as well. To be fair, I mean, Rock's yes, the Rock's hilarious selling and stuff like that, right? And his yeah. good mic skills, but. He he's got that quality where you watch his you watch his matches, right? Yeah. And even if he doesn't do a lot, you're engaged. Yeah, somehow. yeah. But like, at least he did like wrestling maneuvers. Yeah. They might yeah, not yeah. look great, but he did wrestling maneuvers. Hogan, I don't. No, I, okay, if we're gonna go to the differences between Hogan and Rock, Rock sold. Yeah, yeah. Rock sold a lot as well. Yeah. Um, and he wasn't too selfish about who he was selling for. No. But he, he had that quality to him where you're like, as Rocky Maivia, he probably did more moves than the, as when he was actual Rock. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, just, yeah. I so, don't remember. what we're saying, right, about Hogan matches is, you want a politic? Look at this stuff. Yeah. You get an education on what's good for What's good me, for brother. me, and, but no one yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's um, it's crap. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. That's, that's the thing, right? All we can say is the Warrior match was much, uh, quite uh, strangely watchable for some reason. I mean, and that neither of you guys are known for their in-ring skill, right? Yeah. But we're just going to put it as everything else, right? The le- match layout, the intangibles, the crowd reactions, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then straight through the Yokozuna match as well. Yeah. Uh, which was what, which, which, but I think that's because, like we were saying, Hogan was selling for Yokozuna. Yeah. Uh, that's only because he's on his way out. But, yeah. <laughs> um, but everything else is like, 
Just, just even if you're protecting, okay. So you would have thought maybe he could try and have a good match with people, even though he knows he's going to get protected in the finish. Yeah. Except Hogan didn't even do that. Nope. And like Never. his WCW ones are a lot worse. So. Yeah. <sighs> wait, wait. So, so did you watch him when he was first jumped over to WCW, or did you? No, watch him when I didn't. Even, I thought he retired at this point because I didn't like you. I didn't watch WCW. Yeah. When I started watching it, it was when he was in NWO. And I was like, oh, Hogan looks pretty cool. And then I remember this is Hulk Hogan. So, yeah. All right. And, and and let us say, right, right now, are you going to call that when we watch the WCW title matches? Yeah. Is it going to be worse or a sh- a shenanigans than this, do you reckon? Or, 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 or And the match quality better or worse? Well, like, worse. What do you think now? Prediction. It is worse. I've watched them. I'll tell you now. You're in for a treat. Oh jeez, oh jeez! All I know is that the one he just—he basically buried Sting. Um, yes, I had to watch that, and I was like, "This makes me legit." Sick. And then, and then, and then there's there's matches where stuff doesn't even make sense because I think he won a strap match against Vader by pinning Ric Flair. No, that's not even a title match. I don't remember because I didn't watch that. There's... Yeah, all, all I'm saying is. There's shenanigans abound where stuff doesn't like whatever's happening in the match doesn't even make sense whatsoever. Put it this way, this is a spoiler. I'm not going to do the whole thing. Yeah. There's a match where everyone pretty much does a run in. Yeah. And then the twist at the end makes no sense. You're like, wait, <laughs> what? All right. Okay. But what you're saying is, what you're saying is, okay. Hold on. I think it's gonna be. Better. I'm gonna. I think it's gonna get better for me or worse. Worse. I, oh, no. I, I finished watching him hating myself. Okay. For watching oh. it. I was like, why? Right. Why? Um, but am I in for a treat because I'm going to hate watch it? And, and I I enjoy it. No, you're not even going to enjoy it. That's the worst thing about it. You're not <laughs> gonna, you enjoy the first couple because yeah. the one with the giant is hilarious for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. But then you remember, this is WCW. It only just gets worse. Oh, jeez. Yeah. All right. Well, all right. Um, Gosh. Okay. Well, first of all, oh. I, can't, I can say it. I can't wait to watch this, but except that I don't feel that's the general feeling I want no, to be it's, feeling because it's, it's going to be bad. It's definitely the definition of insanity, just doing the same thing over and over again, hoping for different results, which is never going to come. Watching right. his matches in WCW is that. Well, to be fair, but that's the reason why we're watching these matches is... is we want to know a guy, how a guy like this got so far, or so little talent. Well, no, no, no. He's just got <laughs> pop, no pop, yeah, it's not like how, how we knew it got popular, but more like what he does to protect himself. Again. Yeah, uh, you know what's good for him, and nothing else good for the opponents. Yeah. You know? So it's intriguing to watch. And okay, would you say currently comparing this hmm. these matches? Uh, would you say he he they are worse or better? Than the Shawn Michaels losses. Worse. Uh, worse in quality? Worse in everything. Well, okay, hold on. Would you say Shawn Michaels' protection of himself against losing tiles is better than Hogan's protection of yeah, himself? Yeah, because he's just a straight up dick about it. He's like, eh, I vacate this sort of thing. But Hogan's yeah. one's literally like, he takes on the army from Mars and then because he's weakened from beating all them someone can pin him and win that's literally yeah. what it basically is oh, f- okay okay yeah i will say this right as much as Shawn michaels just vacates his title because he doesn't want to lose them right yeah it the shenanigans that hogan pulls do it does make him a bit worse yeah it does it does. it's like yeah like you're saying it's just like the convolutedness that you have to get to to make him lose the title is just like yeah, at least Sean lost the titles sometimes. Yeah, even if he didn't want to, even if he threw the matches, right? And and and, but at least Sean can have good quality matches. Yeah, exactly. But um, Hogan... which is worse when you you know you can have quality matches, you just choose not to because you don't want to make your opponent look good. Yeah, but Hogan generally is not good. <laughs> no, he's a terrible buffle. Yeah, it's just. <sighs> he's... All right. Well, okay. Um, yeah. All right. I don't know how I'm going to feel when I'm watching these WCW ones. Sad. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, 
But hey, look, politicians are gonna politician. That's yeah, really politic gonna politic. Yeah. Uh, so I'm the man who decides that nothing's gonna work for me, brother. Even though here's the funny thing, he doesn't then offer what would work for him. Yeah. So then you're left in limbo because you you'll be like, so if this doesn't work for you, Hogan, what do you think we should do? And then you just not suggest anything. So you just like step away and just start keep on guessing. And then yeah, you just, <laughs> like where do I go now then? Because you know yeah, he's exactly. Me exactly. Oh, great. Exactly. Well, I'm that man, the master politician, C.Y. Chan. And I am the immortal Hollywood Kyle Charles. <laughs> uh, the worst thing is, like, this is another, it's not a bit of spoiler. He joins the, you know, in a bit when the NWOs join back together again. Yeah. So he thinks to be cool because, you know, Wolfpack was cool and the other NWO yeah. was terrible at this point. But because they join back, he starts wearing the. Uh, Red and black colours and comes up to the Wolfpack theme like, oh, you just made this someone cool again. Great. Uh, oh, by the way, by the way, let's just point out as well, this is not a burial of Hogan. We're not, we don't, we don't, we're not like just just talking talk smack about the guy. This is not what this entire episode was about. It's just more like we're having a look at specific things. Yeah. And this guy just happens to do a lot of shady shenanigans within that. Yeah. To the benefit of no one. Yeah, yeah, other than yeah. himself, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's actually quite intriguing to look at as well. Yeah. When like, you think about it, it's, it's like... It's uh, like... I was talking to one of my friends at work about this today, and I've heard yeah. it other places as well. It's like, Hogan is really a heel when you think about it. He's yeah. always been a heel. Yeah. And like, it's true because he just... Everything he does, even the back, a good guy, is just bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When he throws pits and stuff like that, yeah, uh, saying he's been cheated or whatever, even though he hadn't been cheated, like when you know Sid threw him out of the ring and he said throwing the pit. Um, the other bits as well, his moveset with the yeah. eye rakes and stuff, and like, wait, Hogan? Yeah, you're, what, you're 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 a good guy apparently. Why? Are you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it feels better as Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Yeah, 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 because it made sense finally. Like, oh, yeah. you just embrace that you are a dick. Yeah. But, I mean, look, according to him, the reason his moveset was limited is because uh, they were told they told him not to sell because he's a big guy. Uh, even though when he said he went to Japan, he's, you know, he's doing, he had more a variety of moves, better variety of moves. Yeah, his new Japan matches were pretty good, I'm not going to lie. But, um, yeah. And I would say it's partially the fault of the promoters telling him not to do it. It's hubris. Also, yeah. Him not wanting, like he could just shoot, pick and choose when he wants to do it, and he just decides he doesn't want to do it. You know, yeah, not not good for me, brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so enough of the whole bashing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> we're probably going to bash it for more when we watch the WCW once. Right? <sighs> probably just bash myself instead for yeah. going through of it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so, thanks for uh, taking a trip around the multiverse with us. Um, yeah. Um... Let's, let's know. About what you think of these whole matches, if and when you watch them, or to decide not to watch them, or whatever, and because I don't know, I don't know if I tell, <laughs> match, tell people to watch certain matches or not. Yeah, just let but us know if you're a fan. If of you want to watch it for an analysis, yeah, you should yeah. go for it. If you want to watch his analysis, and like you said before, tips on to become, you know, a master politician in your workplace, yeah. watch this. Yeah, damn it. So yeah, um, remember to like, subscribe, share this podcast with your friends. Um, tell us your favourite Hogan moments or your least favourite. And we will catch you next time. Bye. Bye. Defending, but there are those right now that are questioning whether you can withstand the big man. I don't care about those people, man. I don't care about those people that aren't star craving Hulkamaniacs. I could care less what they think. I'm fighting for life, brother. I'm fighting for all those people that have remolded their lives, man. Monolith after Hulkamania. Get their priorities in order, man. Walk around with a lot of pride. And as far as those people that are on Andre the Giant's side, I wish they'd come on down, too. I'd like to slap them around just for a warm-up. But I've already gone through my transformation, man. I'm ready for Pontiac, Michigan. I'm not the Hulk anymore. I'm the Hulkster, man. Looking through my eyes, man.
I'll come. I'm on that mountaintop. Back off, little man. I'm on that mountaintop, and I'm waiting for you, Andre. And I'm guarding that mountain. And the hawk's in its garden. It's got a 32-inch neck, a 64-inch chest, the largest arms in the world. And I'm geared to seek and destroy. Seek and destroy the cancer of Andre the Giant. Seek and destroy the weasel's empire. And what you gonna do, Andre, in Pontiac, Michigan, when Hawkamania destroys you? He is indeed absolutely livid. Going against the man that one time he looked up to and respected. Hulk Hogan to defend.